good morning and a very warm welcome to round four of the 2021 FIM CV Repsol Championship. We've had three fantastic weekends in Estoril, Valencia and Barcelona so far this year. And now it's time for the future Grand Prix stars to race on the world famous roller coaster. Yes, we're here at the sensational Autodromo Internacional de Algarve, a wonderful 4.6 ribbon of asphalt nestled into the beautiful hills just over 20 kilometers outside of Portimao. And today, there's four races to feast our eyes upon. I'm Elliot York, and alongside me to talk you through all the action is my good friend and colleague, Lewis Sudby. Lewis, what a venue this is to come and race at. We should be in for a cracking day. Yeah, good morning, Elliot. Good morning, everyone. If you were to design the ideal racetrack, it would look a little bit like this. You can see it just on that little shot there, the elevation change around this circuit. There are very few places around this Portimao circuit where you're flat. You're either going up or you're going down. Uh, and it is an incredible circuit to go racing at. Perfect conditions here too for race day. You can't, not a cloud in the sky. We did have some quite strong winds here yesterday for qualifying day, but they appear to have died down for race day. Uh, so we should be in for some cracking racing. Absolutely spot on, Lewis. Yeah, perfect conditions for the riders here on Sunday morning and Sunday afternoon. Like I said, we've got four races coming away. First up is Moto2, and here's what happened last time out in Barcelona. So that was last time out at the Circuit de Barcelona, Catalonia, a couple of weeks ago. And both of the races, as you saw, were won by the number 54, Fermin Aldeguer. In fact, he's not just won those two races, he's won all the races so far in 2021. It's been a stunning year from the 16-year-old Spaniard so far. And he's looking in form again today, isn't he, Lewis? He is. It's following a very similar pattern to last season, isn't it, where Yari Montea made this undefeated start to the season on the then speed up, with now, of course, the Bosco Scuro uh, chassis. And Fermin Aldeguer has been undefeated so far this season, as you mentioned, five wins out of five. And he's undefeated so far this weekend. He's been fastest in every single session, right away from Friday morning up until the warm up this morning. He starts from pole position. Uh, and it would appear at this early stage, of course, no races are ever won on paper. We have to say that. So he has to go out there and win it but it does appear at this very early stage to be his race to lose. His teammate Alonso Lopez, of course, will have something to say about that. He's the rider who's in the uh, best position to challenge him. But here's what happened in qualifying, where, as mentioned, Aldeguer was the rider to be. I'm very happy with the qualifying, the two qualifying, because uh, in the qualifying one, I, I push too much and I, I make the, the, best, the best time. And now in the last lap of this second qualifying, I push a little bit more and I make, I, I down my, my time of the first uh, qualifying. And I'm very happy with, with all work of all the team uh, with me. There he is, the number 54 on pole position for the second time in a row, who is on pole in Barcelona, and he's on pole again. And like you say, Lewis, it has been a dominant weekend and a dominant season. Uh, he was 12th on his GP debut uh, at Mugello for all the Grand Prix listeners uh, watching on. I'm sure you recognised uh, Fermin Aldegea at Mugello. I mean, 12th place, first time on a Moto2 Triumph machine at Mugello, of all places, one of the hardest circuits probably to learn and to be chucked in at the deep end at on the Grand Prix scene. Uh, and he did fantastically well, and he's just showing what a talent he is. 
uh, so far in the European Moto2 Championship. Yeah, the talent shining through because it's worth pointing out that the Moto2 machines that they use on the Grand Prix scene are not the same as the machines they use here. Of course, they use the Triumph engines over there um, with a little bit more bite behind them. Here's Alonso Lopez, who's also had a bit of Grand Prix experience uh, this season. Of course, he's uh, been seen on a Bosca Scuro and on a Calex. He was a substitute uh, at the Pons team uh, in the Moto2 class, and he also had a 12th place. He got that at the Saxon ring. It will become a bit of a theme as we go into the Moto3 Junior World Championship when we go through the grid in that one, that riders who've had a bit of Grand Prix experience earlier this season are really benefiting from that when they return to the CV Repsol class uh, into this paddock, and they're really benefiting from that extra experience on the Grand Prix scene. And uh, Lopez starting second, as I say, he will have eyes only ahead of him from second on the grid. Yeah, the two Boscoscuro talent team chatty bikes of Aldeguer and Lopez have really been the standout performer so far. 125 points for Aldeguer, 100 points for Lopez. He's finished second, as you probably saw on your screens there. Um, and yeah, it looks like it's going to be difficult for anyone to try and challenge them again today. But this man, third on the grid, Adam Norodin, certainly will be trying to. It's his third season in the European Moto2 Championship. He's got best of third place, and he's achieved that twice already this year. Two fourth places as well to look, go with a DNF at Barcelona race one. So Adam Norodin's had a good season so far, the number seven machine, and he starts on the front row. Yeah, there's a bit of a Malaysian feel-good factor, isn't there, in the uh, CV Repsol at the moment after uh, Sai Rifidin Asman's victory uh, last time out in Barcelona. So Adam Norodin looking to capitalise on that and uh, earn some more success for them today. Uh, Xavi Cardalou starts at the front of the second row. He looked on course for a front row start, actually, after qualifying one. He was in pretty good shape, but slipped back uh, in the afternoon. Uh, he's another rider who's, of course, been uh, on the Grand Prix scene plenty of occasions. Of course, he's a Moto E regular. Still chasing his first podium of the season, though. He had a best of second back in 2018 and he hasn't been on the podium since then, so he'll be looking to try and uh, open his account today, and he's in a good position to do that, especially with this rider behind him. It's the first round of this season where we've not seen Lukas Tulovic on the front row of the grid. He had a bit of a tricky start to qualifying day. He uh, missed the vast majority of qualifying one with a, a clearly an apparent mechanical issue that kept him in the pit box for most of the session, but got out late on and then managed to take part in quality two, where admittedly the conditions weren't as favourable. The temperatures really climbed in the afternoon, and Tulovic unable able to make the best of that um, but fifth on the grid it's by no means a disaster and he's still in a good position to try and build on those three podiums in the last four races yeah it could have been a lot worse couldn't it Lewis after missing the majority of Q1 where like you say the conditions were not a lot better but definitely better to get uh, better lap times in cooler tra track temperatures cooler air conditions uh, and yeah the riders mostly went quicker in the morning session but yeah like you say Lewis P5 on the grid not bad at all third in the championship he's got three podiums in his last four races as Lukas Tulovic um, and he's in not prime position but he's in a very good position to stand on the rostrum again as we look at sixth on the grid Matteo Reto the number 13 it's his second season ninth place in Portimao right here was his best result last season and he's had points in every race as you can see there 11th 7th 9th 10th 11th so very consistent from Rato and P6 is his best qualifying in 2021. His previous best was 13th last time out in Barcelona. So, a really good Saturday for Rato here yesterday. Yeah, consistency is the watchword with, with Rato, isn't it? As you mentioned, it's his second season in the European Moto 2 Championship. He's finished every single race that he's competed in in this class and only missed out on the points on one occasion. So, uh, he's a safe pair of hands, it's fair to say, with Rato. But yeah, to qualify on the second row of the grid uh, would give him a lot of hope that he can finish higher in a Moto 2 European Championship race than ever before. Oh, his best of the season, as you mentioned, was ninth, but he has been as high as seventh before. Um, but he's well placed to improve on that. As we pan across to seventh on the grid, leading the third row is Kemin Kuba. Now, you may recognize him. He made his Grand Prix debut at the Catalan GP this year in the Moto 2 class. It's his third season, but he has had no points, as you can see there, since the opening round in Restoril, where he picked up a very good P4 and P6. Unlucky last time out in Catalonia got taken out at the notoriously difficult turn 10 but leading the third row on the grid is Kevin Kuba, the VR46 Master Camp rider he's qualified no lower than eighth in 2021 so he's a he's a very solid Saturday man 
can he now convert it into Sunday pace? He really needs to get points on the board, doesn't he? Yeah, he did. He's certainly an entertaining rider to watch, uh, is Kubo. He's aggressive. He, he never shies away from an overtaking move. Uh, and yeah, he'll he'll be looking for, a, I mean, he, as we've seen in his results here this season, when he sees the checkered flag, he's always somewhere near the front. Uh, and he was quick in warm-up too this morning, third quickest in warm-up as we look at Dimas Eki Pratama going it alone for the Pertamina Mandalika squad today because uh, his teammate, uh, Pietro Biesikowski, was sad to report, is not taking part in the racing today. Uh, he uh, confirmed on his Instagram uh, feed yesterday that he's been suffering from angina um, and uh, obviously he's been feeling pretty rough, so he's decided to call it a weekend and he's gone home as of yesterday evening. And uh, we hope to see him back fighting fit at Aragon in three weeks' time. Yeah, we wish Biesikowski all the best. Uh, he did say in the Instagram post he'll be back in Aragon, so uh, hopefully... Uh, that is the case, but yeah, not good news for Bierzykowski, who is currently 12th in the championship. Now then, back of the third row in ninth place is Britain's Sam Wilford. Now, incidentally, he's on a run of 16 straight points finishes. 8th, 11th, 10th, 8th and 9th so far this season. So four top 10s in the first five. It's good consistency from the British rider who's into his third season. He'll be hoping he can better his seventh place he achieved at Aragon last year. That's his best result in the class so far. Yeah, absolutely. There's every chance, isn't there? He's uh, in a pretty good position on the start line. It's all about staying out of trouble here, particularly on that first lap. It's a real bottleneck into turn one. It's a very tight right flick into turn one. So being in that midfield is a tricky place to be. Um, so you've got to make sure you get through that unscathed and then build your race from there. As we look at Alex Escrig starting 10th on the grid, the perennial leader of the Superstock 600 class. He's unbeaten in that class this year. And uh, much like Aldeguer did last year, and he's got to be the template that he's looking at, pulling off a few giant killing acts on that Yamaha 600 Superstock machine and he'll be looking to do the same again today. Yeah, two top 10s on the Superstock 600 machine in Estoril and Catalun Catalunya this year is no mean feat as we now going to take a look at the grid, Lewis, for race one here in Portimao. Yeah, two races to come today in Portimao from the Moto2 class. This is the first. Fermin Aldeguer on pole position ahead of Alonso Lopez and Adam Noradin. Xavi Cardalus heads row two ahead of Tulovic and Reto with Kemith Kubo, Dimaseki Pratama and Sam Wilford on row three. Completing the top 10 then, we have Alex Escrig with Alex Toledo alongside in 11th. Alessandro Zetti starts 12th. Kyle Paz heads row 5 ahead of Vostatek and Ishizoka uh, with Kroza and the August brothers on the 6th row of the grid. And rounding out our lineup, we have Rechacek and Moreno. As mentioned, no Pieto Piesikerski uh, due to illness. His weekend is already at an end. Engines rumbling then on the start line as the riders begin their warm-up lap here at the Algarve International Circuit. Such a stunning venue. If you've never been before, then put it on your bucket list when fans are eventually allowed back in. Unfortunately, no fans trackside today. As far as we can see, anyway, the grandstand is completely welcoming, welcoming back fans at some point in the near future. There is turn one then, the dive down into the right-hander. We're going to see some overtaking moves down there as the riders get into the slipstream on the back straight. Yeah, it's tricky, isn't it? Because as I mentioned, you, you think on the face of it that it's one of the key overtaking spots, and it is. But as I mentioned, it's a pretty tight corner in the end. We see a lot of riders exceed track limits and run on onto the green on the outside of turn one. Turn three is actually a, perhaps a more obvious overtaking spot with the heavy braking spot uh, into the hairpin, the right-hand hairpin. And this place as well, turn five, the hairpin at the end of the back straight is another place uh, where you expect plenty of riders to make a move. And in terms of the battle for the victory here, the start is going to be all important. For Alonso Lopez, you get the feeling his best chance of really taking the fight to Aldeguer this afternoon uh, or this morning should I say is to get ahead of him off the start line if he can get ahead of Aldeguer and if possible get a bite between himself and his teammate then that puts him in a great position to fight him for the victory and we have seen some interesting battles between the two this season if you think back to the opening round in Portugal back at Estoril a tremendous last lap battle between Aldeguer and Lopez so fingers crossed we see more of the same today yeah the start is definitely definitely crucial Aldeguer has shown superior form so far this weekend, both in the morning sessions and in the afternoon sessions. Of course, we've got race two coming up later, which is in uh, the afternoon, the final race of the day. There it is then, the championship standings. Aldeguer, maximum points, 125. Lopez, five second places, takes him to 100 points and only 25 points down. That's the good thing about what Lopez has done this year. Yes, his teammates beat him in every single race but he's finished second in every single race. So if Aldeguer makes a mistake or he finishes 
uh, without any points for some reason Al Alonso Lopez wins the race then they're level on points again so Al Alonso Lopez is doing really well just to keep tabs and keep the pressure on uh, his teammate out again. Absolutely, Lopez will be hoping that this season follows the Jonathan Ray Alvaro Bautista template from uh, World Superbikes a few years ago. Just by taking those second places, it reduces the margin for error that this man on screen, Alvaguer, has, who has been dominant this season. His victories recently have been pretty comfortable, but one mistake, and that's all it takes, one error, one crash, and the championship is wide open again. This is motorcycle racing. Very easy to make a mistake. These guys are some of the best on European soil, it doesn't matter. Everyone makes mistakes sometimes, but Fermin Aldeguer, Alonso Lopez, and that man, Adam Norridin, we're hoping it's not them today. As the riders then rev their engines and get set for race one here at the Algarve International Circuit. What can Lucas Tulovic do from the middle of the front row? The red flag will move shortly after the green flag's waved in the background. Watch for the lights in the top left-hand corner of your screen. They'll come on. They'll go off and we're away. And it's a great start from Fermin Aldeguer from the pole position. Got away really well. Alonso Lopez, not quite. Is he going to get past into turn one? I don't think he is. It's a comfortable lead then. And hole shot for Fermin Aldeguer as Alonso holds on to second pace. How crucial could that be? And it's the two Dynavo intact boys going into third and fourth. And it's Lucas Tulovic making the best of the start from the middle of the second row, getting the better of Adam Norodin, but Fermin Aldegea it is who leads on lap one. Yeah, tremendous start by Tulovic. He went right around the outside of his teammate into turn one. He got alongside Adam Norodin, um, but he was on the outside and he just went straight around the outside. He's now having a go at Lopez. Um, that's that's going to be tied. That's going to close on him. Lopez has to give that one up, I think. No, he just holds it around the outside as Tulovic thinks better of it. Still a long way to go in this race. You don't want to make that kind of mistake early on, and that's put him under pressure from his teammate. Adam and Norodin, but it's job done at the moment for the two Bosco Scuros out front. That's the kind of start the team would have wanted. Aldeguer and Lopez maintaining their 1-2 off the line. Yeah, perfect start for Aldeguer. Not so perfect for Alonso, but he kept second place, which was crucial. And yeah, Tulovic looking up the inside at turn five. You can certainly lose the race on that one. You can't win it. That's the number 13 running wide. That's Matteo Reto from the outside of the second row. So not the best of opening laps for Reto. As Berman Aldeguer then leads the way up the top of the hill, the highest point on the circuit, and then they'll flick it right and then come back down the spectacular final sector. Lopez is looking comfortable, is he, in this no, early he's lap? He's running wide again there. He's getting, with the nature of some of these corners, you're able to take a tight late apex and make it work, but Tulovic is all over him in these early stages. He's managed to fend off the challenge of his teammate Norodin after that little moment he had at turn five, but Tulovic is well placed here to get locked onto the rear wheel and into the slipstream down the main straight, and this could see a change for second place here. Lopez on able to do anything about Tulovic who pulls out alongside and he's surely going to have the line here into turn one. Can Lopez hang it around the outside? No, he can't. Tulovic up to second. There you go then. There's the first turn one move of the weekend done and dusted and it was a classy move from the number three who's made a fantastic start and Aldeguer isn't getting away at this early stage. I know we've only completed a lap but he got the perfect start. He was out front, clear air. Some may have thought, including us, Lewis, that if he got the perfect start, he would start to run away with it. But Tulovic is doing all he can to stick with him as he backs it into turn five. That's lovely from the number three rider. And it's Leinster and the top five are all close together here. Fermin Aldegay leading Lopez, Tulovic, Norodin and Cardaluz with Kubo in sixth. And then there's a little bit of a gap back to Di Masecki in seventh place. Yeah, that mistake on that one really cost Matteo Ratto. He's down to ninth now. He's down three places uh, from his grid position. So a uh, very impressive qualifying, but he's not been able to maximize it on this opening lap. Lopez looking like he's starting to regroup now and get it together as he uh, chases Tulovic. And Aldeguer, uh, who's getting it sideways, he's starting to pull out a little bit of a lead up front, fastest of anybody uh, in the middle sector of this lap. And already a gap starting to open up. And Lopez, if he has got the pace to go with Aldeguer, he's got to make this move back on Tulovic pretty quickly. Yeah, that was a sensational middle sector from Aldeguer, wasn't it? Uh, Tulovic and co were right behind him in the first couple of sectors, but he's pulled out. Alonso looking at the inside at turn 14. Not quite this time. He can see his teammate edging clear now. What can Alonso do then as he gets tucked up, flicks it right, and then coming over the start finish straight? Can he get into the slipstream? Can he make a move into turn one? Because as we say, Aldeguer has now stretched out a lead. It'll be interesting to see what that is over the line as they cross the line from lap two his lead is up to over half a second now out of so what can alonso do down so on he's in the slipstream he pulls out and he does exactly the same thing as tulovic did to him on the previous lap and alonso lopez is now back up 
to P2. It was candy from a baby, wasn't it, down the main straight? Let's see if Tulovic can fight back straight back. No, he cannot. Um, so he's now going to have a, a bit of a hard time from his teammate once again, Adam Norodin. Cardaloos and Kubo are keeping in touch with this podium group. Kubo was fastest of anyone in the mid in the final sector of that last lap. Um, but it was a crucial move that for Lopez because he was starting to already look a little bit impatient uh, behind Tulovic. That move he tried to make into the right hander towards the end of the lap was uh, never going to work. And that's the sole uh, Pertaminda Mandalika bike out of the running. Dimas Eki Pratama has crashed out uh, on just the third lap of the race. Turn 15, the final corner is where he has gone out and that's already the end of their afternoon. Yeah, that's a quick one for DMS Eki Pratama. So thankfully he's up and walking away. He'll be back out this afternoon, hopefully to have another crack at it as the riders now aim to try and hunt down Fermin Aldegheri. He's not pulled out too much advantage so far in this lap. Sector two, a couple of attempts quicker again. So Alonso isn't quite eaten into his lead, but there's a long way to go yet. But these guys need to try and... Oh, and Tulevich is down. Tulevich is down at turn 13. Touched the front, a classic turn 13 crash. Obviously pushing to try and keep with Alonso and out again. Lukas Tulevich has crashed out. Third in the championship, that's a disaster for the German rider. Yeah, that releases a bit of pressure off the Boscoscuros as well, doesn't it? Lopez was uh, still not exactly gapping um, Tulevich, who was pretty quick. Um, through the first couple of sectors of that lap, but now that's released a bit of the pressure uh, from Lopez as Aldeguer sets another new fastest lap of the race. The lead now up to 0.9 of a second over Lopez with Norodin, Cardaloos and Kubo still very much in touch, um, but that's a crucial, crucial incident in the race that with Tulevich out of play, that removes perhaps the most obvious contender um, to the two Boscoscuros out front. Tulevich has remounted, as you can see, but here's what went wrong for him. Yeah, so on the anchors into turn 13 at the top of the hill, and yeah, just a classic front end tuck just holding on to the brakes a little bit too long, a little bit too quick into the corner. And down he goes. He's back on track, so can Tulovic try and get himself back into the points? I think it's going to be a very difficult task. He's dropped down to P20. We'll see if he can carry on. But yeah, like you say, Lewis, disaster in the championship. He's third. He was 64 points down on Alder Gea coming into this race. Um, and Adam Norridan in fourth is only three points. So his teammate, who is now up to third place, will be looking to make action on uh, Tulovic after he's crashed. Look at the sparks. That piece of tarmac down there, all of it, all of the track is sensational, <laughs> but that piece of tarmac down there is absolutely sensational. Sensational. We watched a little bit there, didn't we, Essie Lewis? And it is utterly, utterly bonkers how quick the Moto 2 riders get it cracked over on the left hand side and get it uh, powering up the hill. It is. It's one of those things that you don't quite appreciate until you see it at trackside. It's just an incredible spectacle to watch these uh, motorcycles uh, around a circuit such as this. Now, a couple of riders are going to take long lap penalties very, very shortly. They're not going to impact the action up at the front, but it is worth mentioning. Alessandro Zetti, uh, who's currently running in 12th position, and Jorol Boboom, who's currently in 19th, just ahead of Tulovic. Uh, they're both going to serve long lap penalties very, very shortly for incorrect generators, essentially, that they use during qualifying. What's happening here. I think it's just a replay of them going over the crest at turn eight into turn nine and there we see the sparks. We saw a couple of crashes there in MotoGP, Oliveira and Marini I think went down there. It's a super, super quick place uh, and a spectacular piece of tarmac as we've mentioned. But what's the gap now between Aldegir and Lopez? It's 0.9 seconds, so it's not creeping up over a second yet. It's Carl De Luce sets the fastest lap of the race. He's in P4. So yeah, Aldegir not quite Cl stretching clear as Carlos looks up the inside at turn five. Not quite this time. That's also a token gesture, that one, neck, wasn't it? it? Yeah, it was a bit of a token gesture removed that from uh, Carlos. That was never going to work. But no, interestingly, Aldegar was the slowest of the leading four on that last lap, a 44-9, which isn't exactly slow. Um, but Lopez and Norodin were a, a shade faster and uh, Carlos a couple of tens quicker. So, uh, yeah, Aldegar is not having it all his own way yet. And as long as that lead is around a second or below, uh, this chasing group will still feel they're very much in with a, a shout here. Although, uh, Aldeguer has put in a stunning first sector on this lap, so maybe he's been given the hurry up. It seems like Aldeguer can just turn it on whenever he wants, Carney. When he needs to just batten down the hatches and just stay calm, maybe in the opening few laps he can do it, but then he's got that switch, hasn't he? When he needs to, he'll just get the hammer down and start pulling clear. Stay there for uh, Cardo, who's not sure what happened to him there, but he got it all wrong. Uh, coming out of the left-hander there of uh, turn 13. And it ended up releasing Kubo, so we're not quite sure what happened to Carlos there. He just appeared to have no drive coming off the corner. So whether you had a moment mid-corner, which just lost him all momentum, not entirely sure. We'll maybe get a replay of that, but it's released Kubo. 
up into fourth place. And all that momentum uh, that Cardalus had built up has now all disappeared. Yeah, it's a shame for Cardalus, as we saw, he saw, set the fastest lap of the race on the previous lap, and now he's, he's lost all that momentum. So, yeah, not, not good for Cardalus, but he's shown he's got the pace so he can regroup and try and attack the podium places, but he's got to get past Kemet Kubo first and then up to Adam Norodin. So the gap there at the bottom of your screen is 1.4 seconds. It's now above the one-second barrier. That's a, a healthy margin at this stage of the race for Fermin Gear. As Alonso Lopez, as Adam Norodin for company, he's not dropping in yet, is he? The number seven is sticking right in there, and Norodin can sniff a third podium of the season coming. Yeah, it feels like Aldeguer, he's, he's able to run that 144, high 144 pace pretty much at will, because he's he's pretty much hovering around that sort of 44.8, 44.9 range, and despite the fact that Cardalus uh, and the guys ahead of him were quicker on the previous lap to the one that they've just finished. Um, they were back into the 45s on the next lap. And of course, with that mistake, Cardalus did a 46.5, uh, lost a second uh, on that final sector of the lap. So that's cost them dearly. And Aldeguer, he's just got that level of consistency and that pace that he can set at will, whereas these guys can do it occasionally, but not enough to launch a consistent threat to it. Let's not forget, he's still only 16 years old and he's only just turned 16 as well. It looks like Aldeguer's got a fantastic career ahead of him. And as we mentioned previously on the grid, he has mo uh, MotoGP experience in the Moto2 class on the Grand Prix scene. Uh, so expect Aldeguer to be on your screens uh, more often in 2022 next year. I hazard a guess he's probably going to move up into the Moto2 class. I don't know that for sure. It's all speculation at the minute. But with this sort of form, as we saw with Monte last year in exactly the same team, he won six races in a row. Uh, in 2020, Aldeguer, this will be his sixth win in a row if he goes on to win this race. And Monte obviously moved up into the Moto2 World Championship and Aldeguer, at just 16 years old, will be pushing to do exactly the same. I was going to say, it'd be the top of my shopping list if I was uh, looking for a Moto2 rider for next season. Here's an interesting battle going on. Sam Wilford has uh, taken sixth position now uh, with some of the uh, drama ahead of him, but he's got Matteo Ratto. Uh, on his tail. Reto, of course, looking to recover from that moment that we saw that mistake on the opening lap, and he's been chasing down um, Wim Wilford of late. Uh, they're lapping in the 146s at the moment, comfortably quicker uh, than the group behind them, which is led by Alex Toledo. Alex Escrig is in ninth. He has is commonly the case, is the fastest and leading Superstock 600 runner, uh, with Kyle Paz completing the top 10. Andre Vostatek is the second of the Superstock 600 runners. He's two and a half seconds behind Estrick in their private battle in the 600 class. Yeah, these two have got a bit of a lonely race on their hands, haven't they? Sam Wilford is a good six seconds behind Xavi Cardloose in sixth, and Rato's gap to Toledo is five seconds. So, yeah, a lonely race for these two riders, and if Wilford can stay there in P6, that'll be his best result in the Moto2 European Championship. So, yeah, a, little, a nice little battle going on here between the number 35 and the number 13, both on Calexes, the Honda-powered Calex, as we've seen so often in the Moto2 World Championship down the years until 2019 when we moved to the Triumph Engines. Focus now back on the lead group. And what's the gap now? 1.6 seconds as Cardaloo shows a wheel to Kevin Kubo around the last corner. Not quite this time, though. As we'll cross the line, there'll be 10 laps to go. He's up and down like a yo-yo at the minute, isn't he, Cardaloos? <laughs> he's, uh, he's quick at some points, and then he drops back at others as they come across the line now. Uh, Cardaloos back in the 44s. A 44-4, though, for Fermin Aldeguer. Comfortably the fastest lap of the race. Lead now over two seconds as Cardaloos <laughs> sideways. He basically threw his motorcycle at Kubo there as they went into turn one. And Kubo, who's not shy of making a, a wild overtaking move, even he thought better of that one. Proper back to in there, didn't he, Card Lose? On the anchors, down the hill, rear sliding everywhere. But he got it stopped, and it was a great pass into turn one. And now he's going to set his sights on Kemit Kubo in fourth place. He's not got too much of a gap to bridge. Uh, not Kemit Kubo in fourth place, sorry. Card Lose is now in fourth place. The riders ahead of him is the podium spot. So, yeah, if Card Lose can get his head down, make no more mistakes, he can try and bridge the gap, which is just over two seconds to the... Uh, Lopez and Norridin, who just went through his screen there, will rise up over the crest. Such a spectacular sight, isn't it? Watching the riders come over there, wheel in the air, body shape, trying to get the wheel back on the ground to get the power down and into this 
right-hander at the top of the hill, turn 11. Yeah, I've got to say, as much as I'm enjoying this new side of Xavi Cardaluis, it wasn't exactly the cleanest and quickest way of making an overtaking <laughs> move. As, as entertaining as it was, he lost a full seven tenths in that first sector to the leader, Aldeguer, who admittedly is on a completely different level to the rest of them at the moment. Uh, as I say, lapping half a second quicker than anybody else out on track. But even with these great overtaking moves, he's still losing time outright to the guys ahead of him. So and that's what's that's what's caused this two-second gap to open up for Cardaluis. He's clearly got the pace to run with these... Uh, these two ahead of him who are fighting for second place, Lopez and Noridin, who are also doing high 44s. They're not on a pace that Carlos can't match or better himself. Um, but at the moment, he's, uh, he's making too many errors to really launch a, a real challenge to them as they come across the line again. That last lap for Carlos was a 45-9, including the overtake, of course. That was a full 7 tenths slower than the battle for second place. He's now got three seconds to make up. With nine laps to go, three seconds, it looks like a bit of a job on for card loose in fourth place he's chasing his first podium of the season if he can get up to the rear wheel of Noradin that will be a podium place so he's got the bait hanging in front of him can card loose just stop being so untidy shall we say get his head down hit his lines hit the apexes uh, and bridge the gap but these two are doing very well line astern but no one's matching this man at the minute Fermin now to get 2.4 second lead now but who will finish second? It's important for Lopez to finish second, as we as we mentioned earlier, Lewis. He's finished second to Aldeguer in all of the races so far this year. If he can't win, uh, then obviously second place is the best result you can get. So yeah. Alonso really needs to try and keep Noradin at bay here uh, to minimise the damage. Yeah, just keep yourself in position. Just leave yourself right there in case this man on screen makes a mistake, which admittedly have been few and far between this season. Um, but it's all that's all it takes, one mistake. Um, for Aldeguer and it opens the championship wide open but it's interesting with Noradin running so close in third is he just playing a patient game behind Lopez running just a couple of tenths behind him he's certainly close enough um, behind uh, Lopez to, to, to make it clear that he's not struggling to hang on to the back of that Boscoso although that gap looks a little bit more than two tenths uh, right now um, but whether Noradin's playing a patient game or whether he is just on the limit trying to match the pace of Lopez I guess we'll find out in the second half of the race um, and we'll see who's got more tie left in the second half of the race I'd hazard a guess it's not going to be Chavi Cardo who's <laughs> the lines we've seen him making uh, on a few occasions as you see him at the top of the screen uh, with a clear lap now following the overtake uh, he was still in the 46s a 46-0 again another half second slower uh, than the battle for seconds so you get the impression that card loose is uh, subject to any mistakes up ahead of him uh, fourth is the best he can expect uh, and Nora Dean is now going to be the one that we're keeping an eye on to see if he can make a dent on Alonso Lopez up ahead of him yeah good pace from these two Lopez and Norridin in second and third. Cardaluz just had a, a few scrappy moments, obviously made that mistake and it's cost him time as Norridin runs a little bit wide uh, on the run into turn five. Gets it gathered up though and hits the apex. And yeah, like you say, Lewis, this is going to be very interesting. Seven and a half laps to go. Entering the crucial stage of the race will be interesting to see what the tie wear is like. And if Norridin is just sitting there working where Alonso's quick, where he might be not so quick, where his strength and, strengths and weaknesses lie, uh, and then, yeah, if Noradin can uh, pass Lopez in second, that will be his best result in the European Moto2 Championship. So um, the prize is there, but is Lopez um, just holding him at bay quite comfortably? Is Noradin on the limit? Uh, we're going to find out in the next seven and a quarter laps, that's for sure. Yeah, just an update on the battle for sixth place. Sam Wilford still leads it over Matteo Ratto, although they were just five hundredths of a second apart as they came across the line uh, last time around. So we'll see if there has been a change there. I get the feeling that it has, looking at their sector times on this current lap, I get the feeling Ratto may have made the move there finally uh, on the Brit for sixth position. We'll confirm that as they come across the line uh, next time around. Alex Toledo still holds eight ahead of Alexis Strug, the leading Superstock 600 runner, uh, and Kyle Paz continues to complete the top 10 at the moment as we head into the second half of this race. Aldeguer's lead is now 3.6 seconds. He's continuing to hammer away in those high 44s, low 45s, and nobody, nobody can match that. It's so impressive, isn't it? So impressive. 16 years old on a Moto2 bike at Portimao, a very, very difficult circuit to learn. Yes, he's been here before on a Super Sox 600 machine last year, which uh, he did very well at, incidentally, finishing in the top 10. Uh, having a couple of Moto2 scalps in the process. But it's so impressive from Aldeguer, such a, such a young age. He's still obviously learning, he's still improving his racecraft. But to be lapping consistently in the 144s uh, is just excellent stuff from, from Aldeguer. And like, like we say, 
I'll be very, very shocked if we don't see him on the world stage full time next year. Yeah, you, you get the feeling with him, with such a young age, his ceiling of potential is still very, very high. There's still an awful lot more to come um, from Fermin Aldegir. Uh, as we look at the battle for eighth position, Alex Toledo leading uh, the leading Superstock 600 runner, Alex Estrig, as mentioned. He's undefeated in that class this season, uh, and that's looking like continuing at the moment. I mentioned it a moment ago, and I can confirm, Matteo Reto did get past Sam Wilford on the last lap. He's now up into sixth position, back at where he started this race. Although Wilford, if he does hang on to seventh, then he's got a comfortable uh, gap behind him of 11 seconds um, back to Alex Toledo. That would still equal Wilford's best result in this championship. Yeah, P6 or P7, a good race so far from Sam Wilford, an equally good race also from Matea Reto. Lopez then still not dropping Norodin. We mentioned it, didn't we, a lap or two ago. We're going to cross the line for six laps to go when Aldegea takes the line. There it is, six laps to go then. What's the gap up to now? It's up to four seconds. So, yeah, Aldegea continuing to set that impressive pace and unfortunately for teammate Alonso, Lopez just can't quite match it uh, in race one. We'll go back to the drawing board in race two. Have a look at where Aldegay is quicker, maybe where he's slower, and maybe in race two he'll come out again fighting. It's still not over though, six laps to go. A lot can happen in six laps. Um, but yeah, the gap up to four seconds and there's four tenths between Noridin who's keeping tabs on Lopez. So this is going to be very interesting with five and a half laps to go. Yeah, and already matched Lopez for pace in that last lap. The fact that they're still lapping in the mid-45 shows what a good race they're having. It's not anything on the level of Aldeguer, but he's, as, as I mentioned, he's essentially in a different class to the rest of them at the moment, just riding an extraordinary pace. Uh, Lopez doing his personal best first sector though on that last lap, which has pulled him a further three tenths clear of Norodin. So is this the crucial moment where Lopez is able to finally break the challenge uh, of the Malaysian behind him? Third place would still be an equal vest in this championship for Adam Norodin though, so he would by no means be unhappy if he ended up having to settle for third place. And you do get the feeling if, uh, if he does sense that Lopez has got a little bit too much room, whether Norodin will just settle for what he's got. Yeah, just as a, just as a reference, last year's poll time from Yari Monte was a 45.4. So Lopez and Norodin in the 45s is seriously, seriously good pace. Unfortunately for them, Aldeguer has just got even better pace. Um, but yeah, the Lopez and Norodin doing very, very well in second and third place. Yeah, and Aldeguer's fastest lap of this race, a 44-4, was just a half a tenth slower than his own pole position uh, yesterday, which again tells you the kind of pace that this young Spaniard is able to set. He is absolutely dominating. Um, this first race of the day and of course the second race to come and he will feel that he's in a great position to cash in and take another maximum haul of points. Lopez of course will have other ideas and again later on today if this race does finish the way it's uh, currently running again Lopez will be thinking he's got to try and make the start because Aldegaer absolutely nailed the start of this race earlier on. Here is the battle for second then. It's still four tenths of a second. Once again, um, Norodin able to essentially match um, Lopez. It's interesting when you look at the sector times of these two, Lopez always seems to be much faster in the first sector of the lap, but then Norodin claims it all back in the final sector of the lap, pulling back that entire three tenths of a second. So it seems to be two and throwing between the two. Just as Lopez appears to be stretching that out, Norodin just pulls him back in again. Uh, and with five laps to go, there's certainly no margin for error for Lopez. One mistake and second place will disappear. Here is the battle then for eight. That's Alex Toledo, who finished second in the 2020 Superstock 600, 18 points behind Furman Aldegay. Had a good battle actually with Aldegay uh, last year in the Superstock class. Uh, and he's got the number 32 of Paz for company, as well as uh, Ishizuka just there in 11th place. So a nice little battle here for the lower ends of the top 10. Sorry, Eskrieg is the number 11 uh, and Paz is the number 32. Paz has passed Eskrieg, obviously. Uh, there's the number 11 of Alex Toledo, the Superstock 600 uh, leader. He's won every race in that class so far to watch them come up here. And I've just seen there, actually, I did thought that uh, a couple of corners ago. I think the number 55 of Alex Toledo. Yeah, there it is. His fairing's yeah. just hanging off there. So I'm not sure what's happened, but hopefully that doesn't cause too many issues. I hope it doesn't suddenly fly off into the path of the number 32 or uh, but he, Alex Toledo. He's certainly not going to help him down the straights, is it? With no, that no, sticking no. out on the straights as he uh, tries to uh, make himself as aerodynamic as possible. But it'll be interesting if the stewards take a look at that. I mean, it's, it still looks as if it's hanging on at the moment. But if that becomes any more uh, loose, then you wouldn't be surprised if he gets a black and orange flag for that. Um, with uh, with that 55, it's it's as I say it's okay at the moment, but the last thing you want is that flying off down the main straight and uh, you know producing a real hazard at top speed down the straight. Let's see what happens now as he comes on the straight because there'll be a lot of buffeting now 
uh, as he comes down the straight with that. He's going to lose the place now uh, as Paz just breezes past him. It's certainly not helping uh, Toledo as it's now it's essentially he's got an extra wing on, hasn't he? As it's sticking out on his uh, on the left hand side, his the rider's left of that bike. It's really hanging loose um, and concern that he'll have as well is when he tips in on the left-handers that's going to be really scraping along the floor and uh, doing potential damage so uh, yeah the stewards will be getting a little bit fidgety looking at that yeah they've got to keep a close eye on that haven't they because like we say the last thing uh, that anyone needs on track is for uh, a piece of the fairing to come off into uh, the road as the Oi. number 32 runs wide down the hill onto the green and that allows <laughs> Alex uh, Alex Toledo to move through as well uh, Wait, what's happened with the timing screens here? I'm confused, Lewis. What's just happened to the timing <laughs> screen? Uh, I'm not sure at the moment, but uh, but as I say, we'll keep we'll keep an eye on that. Aldeguer, we can confirm, is still comfortably out in front um, with Lopez still with a half second lead uh, over Noradin. We'll as I say, we'll keep a close eye on this issue with Alex Toledo, uh, who as I say has uh, who's dropped a spot. Um, We'll keep an eye on him, particularly when he comes onto the main straight again, because he's got a bit of a gap. Clearly, when he's in the middle sector of this lap and the, uh, the tight, twisty sections of the lap, it's not holding him back at all. Um, but it was noticeable when he came out of the last corner last time around. He just had absolutely nothing um, as he came out of the last corner um, for Paz behind him. But the, the VR46 Masticam team will be particularly frustrated with that. Paz had got the move done um, into turn one. He'd got the break and he'd got clear track ahead of him and then just threw it all away with that mistake into turn five. He went down the Formula One route, didn't he? Um, down the long hairpin at turn five and just lost all that time again. And he's now got only uh, three laps to try and chase down uh, chase down uh, Toledo and Escrig, who've now passed him into eighth and ninth positions, respectively. Uh, three to go, then. Uh, Aldegay, who's still setting personal best sector times at the moment, uh, is uh, dominant as he's been. His lead is just shy of five seconds. Lopez and Norodine still separated by just under half a second, uh, but time running out for Norodine, as that is the end uh, of one of the uh, VR46 Master Camp uh, riders. And Kemeth Kubo, Another isn't DNA. that just the story of his season? When he sees the checkered flag, he's generally somewhere near the podium, but seeing the checkered flag is proving rather difficult. What happened then down into turn five? The tricky left-hander sucks you in. He's slightly wide there, isn't he? On the dirty part of the track, and the front just says, no, I'm not having it anymore, and down he goes. Thankfully, he's up and okay, but yeah, another uh, DNF for Kubo. And that corner hasn't been kind to the uh, VR46 Master Camp team, has it, over the no. last uh, two minutes? We've already seen Paz run straight on there. Of course, that will promote him back into the ninth position that he had before he went straight on. Um, but yeah, he's now, uh, of course, the sole VR46 Master Count team rider running with Kubo out of contention. Aldeguer then out of the final corner, just two laps to go uh, as he crosses the line, and he's still in the 45, so he's now doing a 45-9, um, which is still faster um, generally than the riders ahead of him, although uh, Lopez has responded uh, with a 45-7. He's now got essentially a second in hand now over Adam Norodin, so second place looks as if it's settled in favour of Lopez, and it looks as if the uh, unbeaten record of the Bosco Scur talent team chatty riders of having a one-two in every race looks set to continue that's Joel Borboom getting out of the way of your race leader out again yeah like you say Luis Alonso Lopez looking like he's just got Norridin covered for second place with two laps to go but it's been all about this man once again in the Moto2 European Championship another classy ride from out again a very mature ride got the perfect getaway down into turn one got the whole shot and he's never looked back had a not a chill, I, won't, I wouldn't say it was chilled out, but a calm opening couple of laps, opening two, three laps, uh, and then he's just pulled the pin uh, and slowly edge clear, 4.6 seconds. Not a job done yet, he's still got to concentrate into the final lap and a half, but it's looking really, really promising once again for Furman Aldegaer. Yeah, and he doesn't exactly look chilled on the bike, does he? But that's pretty much how you ride these Moto2 machines um, to get the best out of them. And boy, is Aldeguer getting the best out of this. I guess the unanswered question, the real unanswered question that we'll have going into race two this afternoon is what Lukas Tulovic could have done. Um, a, had he made um, you know that move stick on Lopez early on, but also had he not crashed out of what would have likely been a podium position. So Tulovic will certainly have his eyes on a better showing this afternoon. Uh, Lopez will obviously be looking at this race this afternoon thinking, I've got to try and make the start 
start and try and disrupt this incredible rhythm that Aldegar has. Once he gets into his rhythm out front and has some clear track behind and ahead, he's very, very difficult to stop as he starts the final lap of the race uh, and still lapping in the 45s. Um, Lopez has now got 1.2 seconds in hand over Norrington. So second place appears to be sewn up, subject to any mistakes uh, on the final lap. Carter Luz has got an uh, empty track in front and behind him uh, for fourth place with Ratto fifth. And Sam Wilford is now on course with that error of Kubo. Sam Wilford is on course for his first top six finish in the European Moto2 Championship. Yeah, brilliant for the Brit then in sixth place as we focus in on Norodin. I think he's going to have to settle for third place, but no matter, it's another podium if he can keep it upright for Norodin. As Lopez comfortably rounds the tricky turn five, we've seen a couple of riders make mistakes there. No such issues for Fermin Aldeguer as the team watch on intently, hoping their man can complete the final out without any issues. We'll rise over the hill for the last time this morning. Of course, they'll go again this afternoon for race two. Aldeguer down the hill through the left hander nice and cleanly. He's got a comfortable 4.9 second lead to play with, so he can just ease his way round the Algarve International Circuit and enjoy this last lap. As he hopefully, for his sake, takes another win. Yeah, and the uh, the charge from uh, the, essentially the back of the field for Tulovic isn't going to yield any points, unfortunately. He's still back in 17th place. His pace is pretty decent. He's lapping in the low 46s, which is quicker than everybody except the current top three. He's quicker than Cardo, he's quicker than Reto, and quicker than everyone else uh, behind them. Um, so Tulovic clearly got some decent pace, but not enough to get himself into the points. Here he is then, Fermin Aldegay rounds the final corner here in race one in Portimao. He'll rise over the crest of the hill and win his sixth race in a row in 2021. Another masterclass from the number 54. The team celebrates another 1-2 as Alonso Lopez will take second place. Yes, he does, and Norridin grabs his third podium of the season in third place. Yeah, Cardaloo's taking fourth position in the end. Uh, Borboom coming across the line just behind him, a lap behind. Uh, he will fail to score any points. Reto does come across the line in fifth position, one up from his qualifying position. And Sam Wilford does come across the line in sixth position for his best result as a CEV Moto2 European Championship rider. Another outstanding ride from out again, as we see the lower ends of the top 10 come across the line. The number 32 of Paz did eventually get the better of Toledo and Eskrig, so a good recovery there from his turn five. Uh, running wide incident from Paz, and he claimed seventh place. A good result then in the end for the VR46 Mastercamp rider. There's the winner of the Super Stock 600 race once again. It's Alex Eskrig. He finishes ninth overall, so another great ride there from the Spaniard. But it was all about this rider once again. Aldegay pulls a nice stand-up wheelie up the hill. I'm sure there'll be plenty more of them to come in the future for the 16-year-old. An absolutely outstanding ride here at the roller coaster that is Portimao. Just waits low to the marshals. And yeah, such a mature ride from Aldegay. Another second place then goes to this man, Alonso Lopez. He'll be disappointed with another second, but like we've said before, if you can't win the race, then pick up 20 points and finish second. He's now 30 points down out again in the championship, but with Aldegay winning every single race, 30 points isn't actually too much of a gap considering the Spaniards' dominance. Adam Norridin, third place. That's his third P3 of the season. Suffered a DNF in Barcelona race one, which just dented his championship hopes slightly. But when the races he's finished this year, he's not finished lower than fourth. So Norridin really putting together a very strong European Moto2 championship in 2021. And after Lukas Tulovic crashed just there at the top of the hill, turn 13 in the early stages, Norridin will now move up to third in the championship. High fives then for the winner of the Moto2 European Championship race and the winner of the Superstock 600 class, Alex Eskrieg and Fermin Aldegay. They'll be more than pleased with their morning's work here at the Argarve International Circuit. They'll go away, have a look at how the race went on the data, and they'll be back out this afternoon for the final race of the day after we've had the Hawkers European Talent Cup and Motor 3 Junior World Championship. They're coming your way shortly. Talent Cup 
Riders will be out first. Oof. <laughs> I was going to say a nice little endo. I'm sure he had it under control, but I thought for a slight minute that he got that a bit wrong down again. But no, no such troubles. Hugs all round in Park Ferme. Another win. at six now in a row for Ferme now to get. Yeah, I'll be very, very surprised, as I'm sure most people will, if he's not on the world stage full time next year. Of course, he's riding in Moto E. It's his debut season. He's 11th in the FIMN or Moto E World Cup. But that 12th place of Pagello on his debut in the Moto2 Championship with speed up Boscoscuro team was sensational. Well, Lopez, another second place. Understandably, a little bit disappointed, but there's 20 important points for the championship. Gives his teammate a pat on the back. Lopez, of course, making his debut on the Moto2 bike this year after being in the Moto3 class on the World Championship stage for the last couple of years in the Sterile Garden Max Racing team. Lost his seat to Adrian Fernandez for the 2021 season. He's come into the Moto2 class hungrier than ever and he's really, really making a name for himself as Alonso Lopez. It's great to see. Here we watch Aldegir coming across the line. He's getting used to these victories, isn't he? Isn't he? Another 25-point haul for the number 54. Number one. Once again, the team celebrating on pit wall. Will they be celebrating like that this afternoon? You've got to think it's going to be a tough task for anyone to stop either of the Bosque Euro talent team chatty bikes, and especially the number 54 around again. As I said, he'll move 30 points clear in the championship standings. A nice willy downhill into turn one. No issues then in race one for Aldegare. Holds the number one up. Will he be number one this afternoon? It's six in a row for Aldegare. High five to the team. Glorious conditions here at the Algarve International Circuit. There's Noridin then, all smiles and rightly so. Third place for the Malaysian. A job well done in race one. Now third in the championship ahead of teammate Tulovic, who I'm sure we'll be seeing more of in race two later on. A small tip off if you're just joining us for Lukas Tulovic in the early stages at turn 13, the left hander. Tulovic incidentally coming across the line 17. So he did manage to complete the race, but no points, unfortunately, for the German. Wasn't too far away from the points, looking from the timing screens, actually. Just under a second, so he did nearly get back on and try and claw his way into the points, but unfortunately, he just ran out of time, did the German rider. As we'll now hear from race winner, Fermin Aldegea. He's down in Park Ferme with Lewis Sudderby. Fermin Aldegea, six wins in a row now. It looked pretty easy to us, but tell us about it from your point of view. How was it? Yes, uh, my my CV story. I'm very happy with with the war of all we gain. In in all season we push too much and make good time. Uh, and this is the result, no? Uh, thank you to all my team for the work, to my family and, and my sponsor. And some words in Spanish as well, please. Sí, la verdad que muy contento con mi sexta victoria. Eh, al final este es el resultado de, del trabajo realizado durante todo el fin de semana. Hemos, sido, hemos hecho el mejor tiempo durante todos los entrenamientos, así que súper contento y gracias a mi equipo por el trabajo, a mi familia y a mis patrocinadores. Well done, good luck in race two. Here's the highlights then from race one and poured them out. And it was the perfect start from pole position man, Fermin Aldegay. He grabbed the whole shot into turn one. Alonso Lopez grabbing P2 with Lukas Tulovic from the second row of the grid. Slotting into third place, but immediately uh, Fermin Aldegay started edging clear after a couple of laps. Lukas Tulovic got the better of Alonso Lopez in the opening stage before this happened at the top of the hill. Not quite that lap, it was the next lap that Lucas Tulovic, he got passed by Alonso Lopez down into turn one. 
hard on the anchors there are the riders as you can see on the screens out again just pulling clear that's Dimaseki Pratama his race ended early at turn 15 and here it is then the instant I was talking about Lucas Tulovic third in the championship took in the front and crashing in race one Tulovic remounted and finished 17th at the end no points unfortunately for the German in race one It was Fermin Aldeguer at the front, edging clear. That's Noridin and Card Luce in the thick of it in the battle for the final, final podium positions. But Alonso Lopez and Noridin were able to break clear after Card Luce made a couple of mistakes. Some of the riders found it tricky going down the hill into turn five. A very, very tricky right hander. And Kemet Kubo found it especially tricky. Ran wide onto the dirty part of the circuit took the front for another DNF, unfortunate for the VI46 Master Camp rider. No such issues for Fermin Aldeguer though, it's six wins in a row now in 2021. He extended the lead in the championship to 30 points ahead of race two here in Portimao. Here's a look at the final results then, Fermin Aldeguer wins here in Portimao from Lopez and Norodin. Card Luce finished fourth ahead of Rato and Sam Wilford. That's Sam Wilford's best result. Paz, Toledo and Eskrig, the leading Superstock 600 rider, close out the top nine. Tenth was Zeti, Ishizuka was 11th. Voschek, the two Augusts. Two Augusts, Kroce and Rahicek finished in the points in 16th perspective. And there is Lukas Tulovic finishing 17th, not too far away from the points after his crash, but a disappointing end. Moreno, Borboom with the other finishers with Kubo and Eki as we've just seen crashing out of contention. It's time for the first podium of the day then. First out will be Adam Norodin in third place. Yeah, this is just becoming a uh, general part of uh, Fermin Aldegir's weekend routine, isn't it? Turn up, win the race, top step of the podium, go home. Of course, he's not going to be doing that today because he's got one more race to go. Uh, where he'll be looking to do the same again. But yeah, utterly dominant again. And he's taking it all in his stride, isn't he, at the moment? He doesn't appear to be overawed by any of this. He's just, just chipping away at it, just taking victory after victory. And he's just got so much talent, hasn't he, at such a young age. And uh, as we've already discussed, a Moto2 Grand Prix ride is surely in his future. Alonso Lopez lifts up the P2 trophy for the sixth time in 2021. And his teammate, a loss, P1 trophy once again. Alonso Lopez gets the check for 200 euros. That'll pay for the fuel home, I assume. as we now get set to listen to the Spanish national anthem, which will ring out again in the Moto2 European Championship after they've had their photos taken with the trophies. I think they're struggling to get the Malaysian flag aloft there. Just can't quite see it. Congratulations then to Fermin Aldeguer, Alonso Lopez and Adam Norodin on their podium finishes in race one. I'll spray the fizzy water. Aldeguer, of course, still 16, so no alcohol allowed for another couple of years. But I'm sure there'll be plenty of opportunities for that to come. We can play, spray the, the bubbly on the podium. Here's a look at the Moto2 Championship standings then. Maximum points for Fermin Aldeguer, 150 from a possible 150. Lopez now 30 points down with Noridin overtaking Tulovic in the championship after Tulovic's DNF card loose in fifth. Sam Wilford moves up to sixth place. 
after his best results in the European Moto 2 Championship. Zeti attempt ahead of Kubo slips down after his DNF. Bishakursky, who you mentioned, is unfortunately at home. We will send our best wishes to Bishakursky. Tiger Harder, Vidoya, Ishizuka, Paz, and Borboom complete the top 17 in the standings. Aleish View, Gutierrez, Mertens, Burnett, and Luca are the other point scorers so far this year. That's the Super Stock 600 podium we're seeing. Alexis Skrig, just like Fermin Aldegaer, picking up another victory in that class. Ninth overall for Skrig, finished. Comfortably clear of Andre Voschek in second. With Kevin August, the Avincia E sponsor Armour Jr. Ryder finishing 13th. Here is a look at them standings then. Skrig leading the way by a whopping 63 points from Voschek. With Kevin August leading Le Leon August by just four points. Crotze, Moreno, Perez, Alex Perez, and Menotzi are the top nine. Antonio Carpe, Schultz, Jesperson, Richek, and Maria are the other point scorers in the Superstock 600 class so far this year. What will happen in race two later on today? We'll find out in a couple of hours' time. Will it be another victory for the number 54 Fermin out again. Next up is the Hawkers European Talent Cup race from Portugal. Stick around. <laughs> 